Hi, my name is Sherry. Welcome to my stamp studio. If you've been following me recently, you know that I've been sick. I'm feeling 95% better, but my throat's still a little bit scratchy. And when I talk, sometimes I cough, so I apologize for that. I know that some of you have been bothered by my coughing, and I'm sorry if it bothers you. Just come back in a week or so, and maybe by then it will be gone. There's nothing I can do about it, and I can't not film. And so uh, when you work by yourself, my husband would not be doing it for me, so he would not agree to this. He does help me with my business, but he would not help do this. So today I'm going to show you a card and I'm going to use a stamp set that's featured in our upcoming celebration catalog, which I've been doing um, mostly out of the mini catalog that starts in January. I've thrown a couple of like sentiments in from the celebration, but this one's a whole stamp set and it's just stuff from the annual catalog and then the stamp set from the celebration. So if you're not familiar with celebration, it's spend 50 or spend 100, most of it's spend 50 and you get something out of here for free, like whole stamp sets and dies and paper. There's a whole bunch of fun things in here that you can pick from. And if you need one of those sent to you, then just let me know. You can go to my website or watch one of the other videos and there's all the ways that you can get them um, are explained to you there. But I'm gonna use this adorable little set and it's called the Gang's All Mirror. And of course it features some little desert creatures called um, the mirror cats. We like to call them prairie dogs or whatever. So it's super, super cute. It's a cling mount stamp set. And I'm gonna use just about all of the pieces. There's a little party hat and uh, we're here for you. Those are the two I'm not using. I'm gonna use everything else though. And it's a pop-up card, just knocked the case on the ground. So just a half a sheet of white cardstock. Fold this in half. My iPad's going off because apparently somebody's texting me. And then I've got the um, stitched label. Um, it's in the annual catalog, I'm gonna use this, but I'm gonna stamp first because I, it's not a clear stamp, so I wanna be able to see where I'm stamping. So let's do all of our stamping. I think we can do it all and then we'll color and then we'll cut. So I'm just gonna use black memento ink and you can see I'm gonna color in with the watercolor pencils. And I've been stamping for more than 25 years and watercolor pencils were the first thing that I colored in with. And I didn't even have very many colors. I had like three. And when Stampin' Up! first came out with a set of watercolor pencils, I thought, why in the world do you need all those colors? Because you can blend with the watercolor pencils and get lots of them. Look how sweet they are. You may have seen um, on my Facebook page, when we went to the Stampin' Up! on stage, they had bigger than life size. I was gonna say life size, but meerkats are not four foot tall, but they had large ones for us to take our picture in front of. So we took a group picture in front of this. Super, super cute. So I've got this one individual little mirror cat and I'm gonna stamp her over here onto some scrap paper. And then on the inside of my card, down here at the bottom, it says happy birthday to a stand-up friend, which is gonna be a fun play on words for our little pop-up because our little stand-up girl that I just stamped will be the one that's standing up. It's got a fun font too. That's the stamping for the inside. And then we've got a cute little cactus, which gives it some color. Here, I'm missing a stamp, I can tell. I don't know where I put it. Oh, I see it now. It's mounted on with something different. And there's two cactuses. Then we've got a little meerkat peeking out from under the sand. So put her there. Then if your daughter is in love with Tangled, we have this little lizard that looks like it could be the lizard from Tangled. Put it here, just kind of give our card a little bit of a border. And then this little stamp says from all of us. And I'm going to put it up here here. I don't have the sticker on it, so make sure I'm going right side up. And there's all the stamping for that. So I'm going to cut this out. Move all my stuff out of the way. 
So let's start first with, I've got this here. So I've got our corrugated embossing folder and just some olive cardstock. I'm gonna put this in this direction. And you always go fold side through your die cutting machine first. And a million years ago, you used to have the corrugator before we had die cutting machines and you just rolled your paper through and it corrugated just like this. So it gets some nice little texture and we'll add that there. And then we just need to cut our little grouping out. So it's always better to stamp first because when you stamp first, then you can line your thing up on here. Unless you're using a photopolymer set, then you can see them. And they just fit on here. So staticky in my house, I have stuff that's sticking everywhere. It's a stitched label, so they do stick inside there, but we'll pop them right out. But the, the where the stitching is, they stick. There we go. When this stamp set first came out and labels, I can't remember exactly what it's called right now. It's a couple of years old. I have a really pretty card. I loved that. So now let's color. If you haven't colored with watercolor pencils, I realize I just took my glasses off. I don't usually do that in videos because I do it a little farther away. But we're not gonna use all of our colors. I'm using both sets mixed of our um, watercolor pencils. We have two sets and you need them both to get all of the colors. But just lay everything here. But I very rarely use one color on anything. So that's how you get some fun shading. So let's do our cactuses. So this is garden green. So I'm just going over the lines and press, you can press really hard because I've had these watercolor pencils for a long time and lots of people in my classes use them. So when they get dull, you just sharpen them. They're not gonna be used up any time in the near future, but you don't wanna color everything in. You're just giving a nice hard press of color. So when you go to use your blender pen, there's lots of color on here for you to move around and blend around. So we've got that. I'm going to take my garden green and just fill in his little the lizard spots. I should have sharpened my pencils before I started, but everybody's on their way home from work. I had my grandnephew today and we did our Thanksgiving shopping at the grocery and we took I took all this time to make a nice list so I wouldn't have to think while we were there and I wrote it in a little detective book form, just a little flip notebook and he was gonna be my list detective. And we got there and it was so crowded and we started to get out of the car and he's like, um, Sherry, I forgot the list. And we go, oh, of all times to forget the list when you're spending $250 and buying all of that stuff for Thanksgiving week and Thanksgiving day. So that was um, Calypso, uh, Coastal Cabana, which I just gave all of their eyes a, a hint of blue. This is crushed curry. And I'm gonna put a little bit down here. It's It's got a yellow tone to it but just give a little bit of sand. I don't want anybody floating in air. And then I also am gonna give just a highlight of crushed curry to this to their little bellies. So then when I got, it took way longer. And then of course we had to go to Chick-fil-A, which of course, you know, has a um, playground. So. Nothing like Thanksgiving break starting on Monday that did not happen when we were in school. We just got Thanksgiving and Friday off. So now I'm just giving them a little bit of Cajun craze on their middles. I forgot her up here. And then just also a little bit up kind of down around their nose and up into their hair. They don't all have to look the same, so just kind of wherever. And then some espresso all around and especially press harder where their little highlights are. This does better if you're not on here because you can press a little harder. 
And it also works better when you're coloring like this to color areas. Like don't do it, her arms and her legs and everything all with the same press of color. Because then everything is the same color. And you can press a little lighter on her arms. So her arms are a little bit lighter. And her tail's a little bit darker. So wherever you press, you're just gonna little, get a little bit darker color when you press harder. They're so sweet. They just make you smile when you're coloring them in. Okay. I'm going to finish coloring these in and then I will speed this up and I'll catch you back. Okay, it's taken me probably three minutes maybe. I can always check when I go back to my thing. So I've colored all of them in. You can see they kind of look a hot mess. So these three I've blended. They've got a little bit of mishmash of, you can see the colors I've used, of gray, of espresso, of the curry, and some Cajun craze. So they all, I just kind of put it in all different places. You can see her, she's been, I did her and cut her out. And he, he's been done. I don't know how I, I'm guessing which ones are guys and which ones are girls, but you know. Um, so when you color them, you're just gonna kind of blend it around. Careful not to catch the blue of their eyes, otherwise you'll have blue in their skin. And just kind of blend, again, one area at a time. Like you don't wanna get her hand. So go around and do their bodies first. Cause that's where I put like the espresso and the gray. So get all that, get their little tails and do one, one animal at a time. And then now I've got this middle left. So just kind of take your blender pen and kind of just smudge it around. And it doesn't, you don't have to clean it cause you want some of the brown to mix in. And then you can even take it now and go back up in here. Just don't get her eyes. Again, go over here. Go around with the, the colors. You can see it had a little bit of curry, but that's okay. Just don't get that blue. Go around the outside of the body. And you want to leave a little bit of white. Just try not to leave it right on the edge. Because shading doesn't happen right there on the edge, which you can see there I did. So we'll just fix that. And you know, these are cartoons. So they can be whatever. And just kind of smudge that around. Sometimes when you get it on the card, then one of them may need a little bit of a highlight or you might not like that, all that Cajun craze up there. So there they are, those are done. And then when you switch between big colors, just take it off. So now we're gonna do, this was the crushed curry and then I added some olive. So it's kind of a bright desert. But this was for artistic purposes because I wanted it to match my olive piece that I'm gonna, the strip I'm putting on the back. Same down here, this was olive and then I toned it down a little bit with the, some gray. I don't like my things to float. And then this, I added some of the, I think it's granny apple. Yeah, granny apple green. To just kind of make my cactuses be a little bit brighter. Because again, cartoons. Now I put so much on her that I don't really need to do a lot of blending. And again, on the flowers, I added a lot. But what I did when I was done with my flowers, like you can kind of mix, see I've got the pink, and then you can kind of get a little bit of pink there. So now I've got a little bit of tiny pink on here. So let's give her little tongue a tiny bit of pink and then just clean this off on their cheeks. So you don't really need to color. You don't need to get any more and they don't have to all have pink cheeks. So when you run out, you can run out or you can just go back over here to this and just pick up a little bit more pink. Cause if you get some on your pencil or you color on here, it's gonna be too much. This is just gonna give a highlight. There's plenty of pink on there because I color so hard. So that's it for our coloring. So now we just have to make our pop-up mechanism. And I will tell you that on stage, one of the girls did it with her paper trimmer, 
which if you remember through the end of this month, which is not much left, I'm giving a free paper trimmer if you order from my website, $115 in product or more. Because you know we have the new one. But at on stage, she did use the paper trimmer and she scored it and she gave some perfect measurements. But I felt horrible at on stage. Absolutely horrible. Do you think that sounds bad now? You should have heard me then. So I didn't write down any notes. I took no notes. The first on stage that I ever went to and took no notes whatsoever or convention or anything. I just did nothing. I paid absolutely no attention. But I will tell you while she was giving her measurements, my phone was laying on the table and Siri just turned on and felt the need to tell us what all those measurements added up to. Because you know, you just never know when Siri's paying attention. So this is just a little strip. It's bigger than it needs to be because my little girl's tiny, but that's okay. So I'm just going to slide it in here. And this doesn't need to be a big one. So I'm going to do it right here at um, like one and three quarters. Because this pop-up doesn't need to be big because our little thing is big. So one and three quarters, and you have to press kind of hard to get it in here. And I, you probably can't see it because it's hard to see. So then you just take the one and three quarters, which is this one here, and you just move that fold mark to one and three quarters. And so we need five of these because you want a full square. So another one at one and three quarters. My other one, my original sample, I did it too, and it's kind of overwhelming for how little she is. And I still have glitter. I'm gonna have glitter on this paper trimmer forever. I may be the first person that sees if you can throw this whole sucker in the sink and just watch it. One, two, three, four, and five. You know, somebody's coming home to my house. So now you have five. So just fold these. Who is it? Me. It's my daughter. I'm almost done. So you've got one, two, three, four, five, and the fifth one is so you have one to adhere, and then you can just cut that off. If you have a bigger image, you can do them bigger, and you can cut this one shorter because it doesn't have to go all the way to the end. So by using the scorer, it just helps this. Let them stay press down a little bit better. So that was a great idea that she had. I don't remember who it was. I don't, oh, it was the golf cart. It was whoever did the golf cart presentation in Lansing. I almost didn't, I almost said Atlanta. I didn't, don't even remember what city we went to. <clears throat> so then you just take tear and tape, but I don't know where mine is because it's still packed from Lansing. So if you still have fast fuse, it works too. You just put this on your little short end. So if you have tear and tape, that works. Just fold this over and line those edges up. Then you just take this, and I always like to put this one on the bottom because of the extra, you're not gonna see it. So lay this one flat again, and this is the one that just has that adhesive. The tear and tape's really kind of easier because you put it on yourself. So put that there and then squish this one down and then in between this next fold, put another little bit of adhesive and then shut your card. And then you can see it will pop up when they open it. And then we need to get our little girl. Put adhesive on the back of her. It's so super simple. It looks like it would be tricky, but it's not tricky at all. And you know, I do math, easy math cards. If there's math involved, it has to be super easy or I won't do it. Yes, this is much better than two inches because it was overwhelming her. So now when they open it, she'll pop up. And then just take your bone folder again, now that all this is in here, and just press on it nice and hard. And that'll help it stay. And that's the other reason I wanted to add this to it. It just gives the card front a little bit more weight. If you use the corrugated folder, don't ever put your adhesive on that, especially if you're using fuse, because it'll just rip it. So add this. Put this layer in the 
between. Sometimes with the corrugated, if you give it a nice little pull, because this was cut five and a half, and it pulls it back out to be five and a half. And then I didn't want any more pop-ups on the front because it's already popped up. So there we go. From all of us, happy birthday to a stand-up friend. How sweet is that? So here's my other one. It's a great um, little card to practice your coloring techniques with watercolor pencils if you've never done that. And this set can be yours for absolutely free in January for a $50 purchase. I'll put this here because they're still doinging up. Once you put them in an envelope and they sit for a minute, I just, I literally just made this one. Then they're a little bit better. So there you go. Everybody have a great day. Bye.